Hey, what is happening, fellow van builders? Welcome back to the channel. Today is 12 volt AC installation day. Although I'm not, you know, as these videos go, I'm not so certain I'm going to get 100% of this uh, unit installed today, but we're going to get started. So let me share with you uh, exactly what unit we're putting in because it's a bit unique, a little different than what I found out there on the market. And I made the choice, it made sense for me but it requires uh, some gymnastics on the wiring um, and it's, uh, it's all manageable. So let me show you what we're working with. Okay, there it is. It's the 12 volt Douglas DC 20 AC system. And uh, don't let that box fool you. It's not nearly as deep as it looks. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can reach down in here and let's see. That's the depth of it. This part faces forward to the front end of your Sprinter, your camper van. What's unique about it is this is flat on top of the roof of your vehicle. So there's four holes that you're going to drill. One, two, three, four, plus, uh, you know, four holes that help secure it to the roof and I'll show you that on the template when we get inside the vehicle. So there's nothing that actually goes down into the sheet metal, like some of the other units you find out there from Dumatic or Nomadic, where there's an actual, you know, significant unit, piece of this unit that goes down through probably a traditional max air fan sized opening. So that's different. And, uh, a bit heavy. One of the reasons I've chosen today, so not only is it nice weather here in North Dallas up in the mid 80s, but I've got some extra pair of hands around the house this go around. So let's get started. Alrighty, tools of the trade. So we're going to use this dozer bit. This happens to fit very nicely uh, for the size of the hole that we're going to drill. And this one is a two and a half inch uh, dozer bit. So we're going to do four holes with that. Then where the studs um, come out of the air conditioning unit and go through the uh, roof, we're going to use this, this three eighths inch drill bit. And if that's not quite big enough, I'm going to auger it out a little bit with this bit. Once those holes get done, particularly the four, so eight total holes we're doing today. Once these larger holes are done, and for the four, uh, we're gonna scrape everything down. First of all, we'll take the burrs off with a deburring tool, and then we'll just smooth things out a bit of the metal. And then I'm gonna use um, Rust-Oleum paint so that we don't have any uh, rust as a result. By the way, this, this is all here to catch pieces of metal that come off um, your handy dandy electric uh, drill certainly safety equipment so you don't run into trouble and uh, that's going to get us going here is the template that came with the kit and it says front with an arrow here and it's hard to kind of imagine this but up front um, I've already looked at the unit itself for the back of the unit sits here went up on the roof and you know it goes this direction so why that's important and why we're positioned this way is number one this support unit is a good sort of marker because on top I've got my roof rack that the uh, uh, crossbar for it runs along about right here and it holds my Fiamma awning so I need to be far enough up front so when the back end of the air conditioning unit sits down on the roof, it doesn't hit my roof rack. So that's why it's positioned here. You, you could actually put it a little bit more this way, but I want enough, enough room to kind of get around this if I put any sort of trim piece around it. So you can see this is the two and a half inch and it, and it is uh, about the perfect size for those holes that we're gonna drill into the van. Um, and then uh, the four studs that go into the air conditioning unit will lower down onto these four holes once I get them uh, drilled out as well. 
and that's the plan. All right, so forgot to mention, um, I'm going to use a Sharpie and mark these holes, plus the four where the studs come down uh, when you lower the unit down. And I'm gonna take this template down because the minute you start bringing the dozer up here, you're gonna thrash this on these four um, and the whole template will shake and move. So we're gonna do that first. We're gonna drill these down uh, or we're gonna use a uh, Sharpie to make the marks. Let's go here. And here. And here. I'm gonna go right through the sound, original equipment sound deadening that Mercedes put up, which is no big deal. A dozer bit can chew right through that stuff. All right, so we got that. Now let's do the smaller holes. These smaller four are a bit wonky because this template fits right over the area when you center it where you have your channels. But I'm gonna cut right through those, hopefully, and not notice them. It's gonna be a little challenging here. That's, those, those hit the mark, and these are a little off the mark in terms of where the template's positioned. Okay. It's amazing. It's like shorts and flip-flop weather in the third week of October. All right. Now, looks to me like we're ready to rock. So we're gonna start with the uh, smaller holes first. <laughs> Yeah, this step blade, step bit is by far easier to use than a uh, standard drill bit. Far easier to use. Probably work well here too. wants to travel all over the place because it's on a it's on a uh, angle so travels everywhere there we go it's a speed issue there we go get that hole going That one you gotta finesse a little bit because it's right on the fold or the, I don't know what you call that, uh, shape and the roof panel. And so I started this way and bring, bring the bit this way um, to finish it out. And that's a three eighths, not quite three eighths straight up. Neither is that one. So I'm gonna open that up a little bit more. Okay. And I've noticed 
in the uh, parts bin here that's provided from Douglas that the studs, that's a stud and it's metric that goes into the roof. There's plenty of room there. Plenty of room there too. So these actually might need to, they're in the, in the template. These are quite wider than the space needed for the stud, the holes in the template. My thinking is when you get these uh, mounted to the underside of the air conditioning unit and then you set them down on to the holes, this is giving you more space than is needed because the seal goes around the outside of this. The seal and the lap sealant goes around the outside. So it's okay if you got some play in there to begin with because uh, you'll have it sealed. And then additionally, these size holes, I believe, will make it easier to position a pretty heavy unit down in through the, the holes when you put it in. So mine are actually still smaller uh, that I've completed here than the template. And, you know, if I take, if I take my step bit and insert it in there, um, it's almost right to the end before it hits the hole size. So I can, I can do that now, which is probably a smart thing to do now rather than later. Okay, so that's template size now. And that is template size. That one looks bigger than template size, but I don't think it is when I look up through it. These step bits are awesome. I actually really like those. and we're going to paint Rust-Oleum in here. Uh, so I can, I can feel the steel fragments flipping all over on me. And um, one of the cleanup methods is to not only get all this stuff out here, out of here, uh, but I've got my um, leaf blower. I'm going to blow everything off the floor as well when we're done. For those of you who hasn't, haven't used a dozer bit, you do have this internal pilot hole to get as close to the center as possible. Once you get that centered, um, then you can drill forward and the rest of this will grab the sheet metal around it. You're definitely gonna wanna have eye protection for this number uh, because this bit throws a lot of shrapnel. So just be advised, and this is a visual for me to try to hit the center. Just look around it a little bit. Make sure you're lined up. Which just double checking the template, make sure I'm lined up. Just barely touched it and we had that shrapnel I talked about just went everywhere so here we go tool those are really smooth they don't even need it because that step bit is frankly that one needed it a little bit that step bit's a really good drill bit approach for sheet metal this one absolutely needs it and then uh, for good measure we're also we've got a file we've got just a little uh 
oh, I don't know what that is, round file. I'm going to get you a picture of how close my crossbar is up on the roof to this hole. That'll show you maybe a little bit about the alignment, the importance of alignment here. So let me bring you up over here. See, that's how close that crossbar is. I can't touch it with my finger. Cannot get there, but the back end of the AC unit outside the roof is going to be about right there. So that's why it was really important to get your template positioned appropriately. Okay. <coughs> Good. Folks, don't forget to spray the sheet metal so that you don't have any rust to prevent any rust uh, that will result of these holes that were cut. So this is, this is fun. Spraying around the hole there, I kinda got the cross member a little doused. Got that one on that, that one on that, oh boy. I'm going to clean out up with some paint there. Action people, we're on set, quiet. That's the air conditioner unit. It's pretty small. It does seem I small. I know there's no water that's going to get in here. Water can get in there. It rains. Yeah, but then, then you're going to have water in the van. No, because it's sealed. This won't. This doesn't allow water down into the... So where does the water go? Uh, you know, we'd have to take this cover off, but it's going to come out these the sides. So you checked that this can be exposed to outdoors? Yeah, outdoor. this is an outdoor... Okay. <laughs> All right. Checked, it's fully checked. All right, we're taking the Douglas DC-20 gasket and this has sticky tape. We pull it all off, it's pulled off both sides already. And then we put it down in such a way because
All right, so that foam gasket is down now, and then we're gonna put Cicaplex all the way around this when it's time to seal it completely um, and affix it to the, to the roof. So that's the gasket, and it'll press down and be sealed once the weight of the uh, air conditioner is on there. So we're gonna lift the air conditioner up here next, and we're just gonna set it on here and make sure it fits um, before we do the final seal. Totally filming. Ooh, don't put bugs near me. Don't let go of it. I'm not letting go. Get mom's side, I got it. I got I got it. Don't let go. I'm not letting go. Don't let go. <laughs> I'm nowhere near having it. Don't don't no, we got I'm close it. Just to get the it. other side. We have this side. I got it. Woohoo. Okay, don't you need more help up there though? Well, I do need help. Here. You don't want to get on that same ladder, do you? Well, she's too lazy now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow, this is... That's a bit... It's giving Jane in the jungle. Henry. I'm not going to go backwards. For goodness sakes. Do you need a hair tie? Don't throw those on the ground. We okay, them. everybody... Them. Just put them... Everybody relax. So we're going this way. Okay, don't you want this more on here? No, but we're going to set it... We're going to flip this and turn it right over on top of this. On top of that? Yeah. But don't we are have to filming? know where the holes are? I'm filming. Yeah, but see that right here? This... I'll just so you know, see these back here? Yeah. You got about four inches. Okay. So see that right there? Well, we can hover it and then kind of... Yeah. Do you want me to go inside the van and make sure you get it there? Yeah. Or Kate should be able to tell us if we're close. Okay, so hold on a second. Yeah, we're not close. We gotta go back that way. Well, I think it will go back. Wait, wait, wait. No, we're in. I think you are yeah, as well. Yeah, we're going the wrong way. You had us take it back too far. I did? No, I didn't. Oh, the first set of holes are right there. Yeah, you're gonna have to drill another set of holes. Oh my God. Hold on. <laughs> okay, let's just try again and see. I don't think it's gonna work. Oh. Are we like anywhere near close? Well, no. I could. Hold on. Wait, yeah, we are. It needs to come more towards you. Does it? It won't go anymore. We can't. Like how close? Like a half an inch? No. No, don't have a half an inch. You what if you took this? Oh yeah, that little bolt off. No idea. That feels close. It does. I'm it's in. it's down on this side. Yeah. So should I go forwards, backwards? Here. I can't push it. So I need to widen the thread. Okay. There, you there. Up a little higher. Okay. Please don't fucking drop. He's not. Deep breaths. Okay. Good job. Super light, Dad. <laughs> Hang on. Close. This one right here. Back up again. This one doesn't do anything for me. Should it move forward or back? If you move it towards the street. Okay, like how much? Just a tiny bit. Then down. Yay! Well done, team! Woo! Sick of Flex will be here tomorrow. We'll get to do this all over again. <laughs> well, Big high five. It's important to test fit it like I screwed it up already, right? Yeah, it is important.
Here, here's the question. Will that bar go back on there? No. No? No. Can can Did the camera girl it? yeah, there's no way. Can the camera girl exit? Oh, that's so close. It's like literally an inch, which is so can unfortunate. Can you flip these things so that thing is on top? Oh. Can you do that? Can I do what now? Can you flip it so the this flip this? Can you do that? So it's up an inch? Yeah. I Does can. That take it high enough? That could be brilliant. Is this a photo moment? Yeah, I'm doing this. This is the girls who've helped put it up on the dealie. Yay, we're But so we got a problem right here. As I had talked about this bar, and I thought I had a little bit more room than I actually did. So now, now this bar doesn't fit anymore. I'm gonna need this extra half inch that this distance will buy me and half inch over there by removing the shoe off. We'll move the whole awning down a little bit further and uh, we'll see where I get to. That's, that's the mitigation plan. Windy day in North Dallas. There's some rain coming in tomorrow, so we gotta get this done. I don't know if you can see under there, but there's some gaps. I'm gonna show you about that here in just a minute. Gaps in the gasket material and the ridges on the ceiling roof. So up to this point, install's gone pretty well. I've had to make some gymnastic moves on my roof rack because I slid the air conditioning back a little bit farther than it should have been. That's okay. Was able to, given my daughter uh, viewing this, here's what a roof rack looks like normally on this particular 80-20 roof rack. She said, why don't you just flip that thing upside down? And I did it. She was right, it clears. All right, here's the parts and pieces and weapons for today. I'm using this drill with the auger bit because I think I need to widen a little bit the holes for where the studs come through in the air conditioning. So we're gonna spray that up once we're done. This is for the Sika Flex, Sika Flex 291. Good product. Um, just like lap sealant, does the same thing. You can see this is a the boating business. Underwater, attaches to metal. And then here are the foam strips that come with it that are supposed to fill the gaps up on the roof. So Sprinter Van's got those unique, um, that unique shaped ceiling on the exterior of the roof, and this is to, to handle that. I'm just gonna show you what this looks like when it's when it's mounted in here, see there's just the four holes and then you can see those studs coming from the ceiling. Okay, there's a good look at the, the studs and the wiring harness that comes through. This connects to the control plate uh, that has the vents and the controls for the air condition itself that come on the inside of the van. And so, I've marked it here a little bit because I've marked it here and I've marked it here and on this side and on this side. I'm going to take a little bit more material out and scooch it that way ever so slightly. So that's why I've got the paint too that I want to get that all painted up with once, uh, once that uh, size of the hole, location of the hole is moved slightly. Purpose for that is I've got some room on these studs over here, but it's binding up a little bit. And I just wanna make sure it's sitting comfortably and freely uh, before I lock it down. All right, so this is the air handling control unit. And under here are those connection pieces we saw when I showed you the inside. So this is gonna come off. That 
attaches to those cords that came through the hole to the unit up on the roof. And this says front this way, so if that's the front, this is going to go. This is your mounting plate that secures everything and pulls the unit down so you can bolt it up appropriately. Uh, that goes up to the ceiling on the interior side. Might as well show you the whole kit. You do get a uh, remote for this. Um, and keep in mind, this is a really nice um, positive negative copper wire uh, cord. This is kind of set up so it could move along the exterior of a truck, let's say, semi truck or whatever. And they give you in the hardware kit a bunch of uh, clamps. So this is if you were gonna put it on the exterior of a vehicle um, and run it to wherever the battery source is or wherever the power source is for the AC unit. I'm not doing that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this inside using a gland uh, on the roof and bring it all the way down inside of the vehicle and to the battery. So plenty of uh, positive and negative uh, power power wire for that. They really did a nice job giving you um, and labeling it appropriately, right? As it should be. So that's the full kit um, and a nice set of directions. And by the way, a nice, uh, uh, nice fellow out in Southern California who will get on the phone with you and talk to you about this whole thing if you got any questions. At least the person I connected with at King Tech because this is a King Tech product. Now you can see better the uh, gaps, I think, that are in the gasket unit that we're going to work on, uh, as well as drill the holes out a little bit bigger. Deburring tool. This makes it a little tough. If you'd have done this, if I'd have done this at the beginning, it'd have been a lot smarter. Because, all right, this one's okay because it's not. So I try to just flip it down under there so it doesn't glue up. It's catching a little bit, but it'll go under. And then scooch it. Try to scooch it to the middle. stick it here and there a little bit to get it to move and that one's pretty much in I can see, I can see sort of, a little no. bit more towards the street. More, yeah. Street. Street. It feels like it should be like there. And then where? I can't see now. That's
Oh, two of them, right? The one closest to you, Dad, on the yeah. your left. No, Stop moving my side. You gotta lift yours no, out. I'm in. You lift Mine are in. Now you're in. Nice. Yeah. Thanks. Let's get the let's get the high five one more time. High five. I feel like we should wash this. I feel like. Well, there's a plastic shrink wrap over the whole thing. How do you know? Why didn't you put glue on the top of that phone? It doesn't or say to. Or flex on the top of the phone. It doesn't say to do that. You don't think water will get in there? I hope not. Good. Why? Because then it's just, there's nothing between the foam and the plastic. Yeah, but you're not going to have a dam of water. You know what I mean? Well, I guess you're going to really tighten it down. It's going to tighten it down, yeah. Okay. Douglas could have done a better job with the interior marketing of their products. Of course, a lot of these are industrial use. Nice. Woohoo! Look how beautiful she is. Where are you going to put the hole for this? Uh, right down here. Okay. Thank you. And cut. <laughs> All right. We're at that point now where we're putting the mounting plate up here. And that says to the front. I don't know if you can see that. The directions there. To the front. Put it up on the studs. We're doing a washer, a lock washer, and a net. And it's on lock washer and a net. So see that little temperature sensor? That was originally right there. And I just scraped it off and uh, tacked it right back down there. Uh, and it feels like I now have the room I need to put it up here. There's less torque on the plastic um, face plate, this whole mounting plate, than before I moved to that uh, temperature sensor. But uh, we'll see. I'm going to try to screw it back up again and see what happens. In moving that temperature sensor, this thing mounted up very nicely, nice and flush. Pulled all the plastic off of it that I could. I'm going to tell you what, they got some serious packing plastic on this. Uh, there's pieces of it that can't get out. Like around here, can't even get it to pull off of this control unit. I don't know, maybe it'll melt over time. It's stuck in here. These screws won't back out without starting to pinch all of this material in here. So I'm going to get in touch with uh, the Douglas folks, the King Air people, and ask if there's some sort of, you know, secret of backing these screws out. Because I've backed them out and it won't come off. And I don't want to break it because it's nothing but plastic. So anyway... Moving that temperature sensor solved it, so it's now it's, it bolts up flush, which is cool. All right, here's the big reveal. Ta -da! There she is. Mounted up, sturdy, ready for the rain. All right, van builders, that's it. Uh, the first, I think, install of a DC-20 12-volt AC unit on a Sprinter van that I found on YouTube. Maybe there's one out there, but I wasn't able to find it. 
this is a unique choice, right? Because the the unit itself is bolted straight up against the wall with four holes that handle inlet and outlet air uh, into the unit onto the roof. So not like some of the other brands that come down into the cabin of the vehicle through a similar size hole as a Max Air Fan. So this is probably more for the industrial trucking business. Uh, it's totally usable for a Sprinter application, but you just need to keep that in mind, the differences uh, between them. I chose this one because it had some decent ratings. And uh, frankly, it was a little bit more reasonably priced than some of what uh, the units I was finding out there on the open market. Directions are pretty good. Uh, pay close attention to those. It's important, use your templates, think through the process uh, before you start cutting holes in the van. I think if you get to this point though, you've probably already cut a few holes in your van. Uh, so we're not done here yet. This part of the install is done, but remember the other unique piece about it is that I'm gonna have to bring a gland inside the van and down to the power bank um, and that's still to come. So I'm not gonna be testing it just yet. Uh, it's all sealed up there and ready to go for uh, next steps. And it was important to me because I had cut the holes in the roof, needed uh, some uh, able-bodied hands and my daughters and wife are here to help. And uh, so, plus we had a rainstorm coming in after I'd already cut the holes. Anyway. All ends well, I think, uh, but more to come on the final, final install. So thanks for being with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like what you're seeing, please hit that like button. Uh, please subscribe, comments, love to hear from you. And if you've put a, a Douglas DC-20 into your van, uh, let me know how it's going. All right, be good. Bye-bye.